this is Rachel here from a very warm and breezy New Zealand. Uh, it's just the start of summer here and we're getting some pretty hot temperatures for our neck of the woods. We had 35 here the other day. So uh, I hope we don't get too many of those. Anyway, I just want to make a bit of a video because something has been brought to my attention recently and it's been rumoured that people are saying that I am crazy <laughs> and, uh, and that I hate all Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, this is probably something that Witnesses themselves are saying. Um, and it probably stems from the, the car witnessing or car unwitnessing that I've been doing, parking at the intersection of the grove that goes to the Kingdom Hall with my signs and sometimes balloons. Now, I would like to point out to those people who, who, witnesses who say I'm crazy and I need to see somebody, who really is the crazy one? I don't shun my children because seven men I've never met have told me to. Okay? Now, I think if, I think most people would agree that if you are shunning your children, as the Watchtower study for tomorrow says, from the October Watchtower 2017, it says to avoid all normal contact with your disfellowshipped family member, including you know texting, email and social media. Now to me, that is crazy. And I think in this day and age where people value the family, um, I think they would find that unacceptable. They would find that, in fact, crazy. And I don't believe I am crazy for um, exposing this terrible practice. The shunning practice, it, it destroys families, it destroys lives and people. It prevents, um, you know, when young people are disfellowshipped and they lose all their um, support network, their family, the people that actually really do care about them. They lose their guidance. They must turn to other people to fill that spot. Um, if they can find other friends, you know, they can get into, in, in with the wrong crowd, get into substance abuse. Uh, sometimes they become promiscuous. Um, all sorts of problems arrive, arise and unfortunately some do commit suicide. That's a heavy price to pay, isn't it? And I don't think Jesus would particularly approve of that. Um, also, we see marriages break up. You know, if there's um, a spouse that decides that he no longer can go along with the teachings of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, his relationship with his spouse changes and with his family because people who no longer agree with the doctrines of the governing body are painted as apostates, which is like the worst thing you could be in the eyes of one of Jehovah's Witnesses. They almost have this superstitious idea of what an apostate is, that it's someone hell-bent on, on destroying other people's faith who's anti-God and anti-Christ and all that sort of thing, which is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. A lot of people who decide that they no longer can go along with the teachings of the governing body and no longer want to be known as a witness um, will be quite happy to allow their spouse to, to, to do as they wish and won't interfere if they want to continue going to the meetings themselves. So. It's quite untrue that they just have this malicious intent of wanting to destroy the faith of anyone around them. And anyway, this, this belief, um, this kind of thinking that is ingrained in witnesses, this kind of superstitious, phobic reaction to an apostate, results in broken up marriages and then child custody issues and all kinds of things. It's just ridiculous. And also we see, you know, when ones perhaps in my age group get disfellowshipped and they've got elderly parents, 
who uh, may be in need of assistance and may need some care at home. Um, they are shut out. They, you know, there are many examples uh, or experiences that I've found on the Facebook groups where a disfellowshipped witness will find out that an elderly parent has been ill and in hospital or had a major operation and they haven't been told about it. And sometimes, and this is terrible, an elderly parent may even die and nobody tells them that their parent has died. What an unloving, unchristian thing to do. And if you look at the frequently asked questions section on jw.org, they talk there about having dignity and respect for all peoples under the, the question about um, are you tolerant of other religions. Here yeah, they say that they are respectful of everybody and, and accord dignity to everyone, except it seems that if you are a former witness, it, it doesn't apply to you. You really are like a non-person. Um, no consideration is given to the feelings or the emotions of a former Jehovah's Witness. So it's a very, very sad situation. So I feel well within my rights to speak out about this dreadful practice. And I know there are many um, very nice people in the organisation, very, some very sincere people who do their best to live a Christian life and to model their behaviour on, on Jesus. But just because there are some nice people, it doesn't mean that I should stop speaking out against this practice. I don't do it to hurt them. I don't want to hurt those people. But they are still supporting an organisation that literally kills people. It's not only through the, the shunning, of course, where people can end up committing suicide. I mean, some active witnesses do commit suicide as well. And mental illness is fairly rife amongst Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, but the the uh, doctrine on blood, you know, the not accepting a whole blood transfusion, even when it's deemed necessary by the doctors to preserve your life, they uh, won't accept that, basically on the say-so of the governing body. Even though they've changed their understanding of that prohibition on blood somewhat and watered it down so that you can conscientiously accept blood fractions if you like but there's no biblical basis for making any kind of distinction between whole blood and fractions of blood so it really is just coming down to their opinions and when life is involved I think that's wrong I think they should be letting each individual Christian make up his own mind about blood, whether in fact a blood transfusion is prohibited by the Bible or just eating blood. There's, um, there's a lot of scriptural evidence to suggest that um, it's not, not necessary to avoid a blood transfusion. But anyway, thousands and thousands and thousands of people die from, from refusing a blood transfusion. So that's another area where people's lives are at stake. But my main, main focus, I suppose, with my activism has been on the shunning because that is one that it's clearly in writing. It's mandated by the organisation and uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are regularly reminded through their uh, Watchtower articles, like the one they're going to have tomorrow, that what is expected of, of them is to shun their, their disfellowshipped family members and to avoid all normal contact with them. So the ideal thing the governing body wants is for no contact whatsoever with them. So this is a very harmful practice and the public, uh, a lot of the public are not aware of this practice at all. They're quite surprised to find out that Jehovah's Witnesses practice shunning and to what extreme they practice it. And given that Jehovah's Witnesses in my country, as in many other countries, are registered as a charity. That means that they are exempt from paying taxes. 
presumably because they take some of the burden off the government in providing services for needy people. However, as we know, Jehovah's Witnesses do not um, perform any charitable works towards people in the community. They don't provide food banks or counselling, budgeting advice, um, drug and alcohol rehabilitation, anything like that. They, they barely provide for their own people. Well, they don't have anything formally in place, even for witnesses. So the taxpayer really isn't getting any value for money there. In fact, what we see is the opposite, where, where families are broken up, witness families are broken up. Oftentimes, those uh, victims turn to social services that are provided by the government, paid for by the taxpayer, to, to pay for their therapy, their visits with a psychologist, uh, help with perhaps accommodation because they may have lost their place of, of um, accommodation with witnesses or employment because many witnesses work for other witnesses. So for, for many, their whole life is really affected by being disfellowshipped and that cost comes back to the taxpayer. So I don't think the taxpayer would be very happy to know that they are in effect subsidising harmful beliefs and harmful practices of Jehovah's Witnesses or any other religious group that practices shunning and there are a couple in this country. I don't think they would, I don't really think organisations like Jehovah's Witnesses because of the, the harm they do to the family um, are in line with the general values of society today where family togetherness is valued. So that, that is why I do my activism. Some have criticised me saying I hate all witnesses. Now I don't feel that I come across as hateful in my videos. I certainly do not feel hate for any of my former witness friends. In fact when I see them I tell them I love them. Sure, I can feel a bit, I can feel hurt. I do feel hurt that that they shun me, that they somehow think of me as a monster just for speaking up about the harmful practices that many of them agree are harmful. Many Jehovah's Witnesses secretly do not follow along with the governing's body, governing's body, the governing body's instruction to shun their disfellowshipped family members. They will continue to uh, meet them in private, have them at their homes, uh, whereas, whereas some will follow the instruction, you know, follow the letter of the law and suffer the consequences of it with depression. Um, yeah, because the ones shunning suffer as well. Of course they do. Um, so... It's a very sad situation, but no, I don't. I don't hate these witnesses. I think of the good times that I've had with many of them, and it would be nice to be able to have good times with them again. And I understand that they are in an organisation that has moulded their thinking and conditioned them to to think a certain way, and also they must feel under quite a bit of pressure. There must be quite a bit of cognitive dissonance there. And I would hate to be experiencing that again at this time when there's so much pressure on them because they, they all believe that Armageddon is really just about to happen, you know, or the Great Tribulation is imminent. So they're under a lot of pressure, you know, to be loyal to Jehovah despite the doubts, their increasing nagging doubts and uncomfortable feelings that they have. Anyway, um, I'm not going to give up my activism and, you know, enough is enough. This practice of shunning is, it's just cruel. They say they do it out of love. But I can say it, tell them that when you're being shunned, there's nothing remotely loving about it. 
that doesn't feel anything like love, it feels like punishment. You know, you don't go along with us anymore, so we will punish you. Um, that might not be the way that general witnesses think, but the governing body don't like it when people stop following them, do they? Just like the Pharisees in Jesus' day, they didn't like everyone going off after Jesus, did they? Um, they liked the power and position and glory for themselves. And when you think that the governing body consider themselves already as kings, if you like, they've already rewarded themselves with positions in God's kingdom alongside Christ as co-rulers. How proud they must be. Um, you're having over 8 million people just... Um, hanging on every word they say and believing it without any critical thinking. So, yeah, these men are powerful. One day it will all come crashing down, but it might be a long way away yet. However, uh, I think that's about all I wanted to say in this video. And I probably will make another one tomorrow when I do my car and witnessing again. Okay, bye.